Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Aaron S., Craig T., and Alex D. Thank you for choosing to support Electrified. Since unfortunately Rob and I were both off all week, I'm going to go extra quick today just to make sure everybody is up to speed on the news from the week and of course, including today. On Tesla's Q2 deliveries, awesome result. Just want to point out, I see a lot of people talking about Tesla's inventory in terms of the raw number going up. Remember that really does not matter. It's all about the days of supply. Doing the calculation, Tesla currently sits at about 16 days of supply. As you can see from Troy Tesla, like we're currently lower than where we were back in the early quarters of 2020. And for context, most of the auto industry is anywhere between 30 and 100 plus days of supply. So Tesla's 16 is not at all a problem. And lastly, I saw some concerns when it comes to regional performance of Tesla. I would not at all make that a bigger deal than you need to. There's always going to be fluctuations in factories and different regions when it comes to incentives and different technologies and new models that Tesla is working on rolling out. Whether it's Project Highland or new cells from a supply Supplier, then you throw in all of the supply chain, just know you'll always have fluctuations region to region. Just zoom out, see the bigger picture. Tesla is currently showcasing some of its AI prowess at the World AI Conference in Shanghai today through Saturday. And they shared this cool picture of the Optimus bot, which sources are telling Electrek is going to be used in display units inside stores in China to increase the foot traffic because Tesla has seen that the Optimus bot draws a lot of attention. And as I saw Herbert point out, if you go to Tesla's careers page, you'll see over 50 different job postings right now for Tesla bot, all in Palo Alto, California. So don't sleep on the bot. In terms of where Tesla is at this stage, um, I think we are very close to achieving full self-driving uh, without uh, human supervision. So, so when I drive a Tesla car using the latest uh, full self-driving beta, I almost never need to touch the controls going from one destination to another. Again, this is somewhat speculation, uh, but uh, I think we will achieve uh, full self-driving, depending on what level you call it, four or five, um, I think later this year. So now I've been wrong about this prediction in the past, but I, I feel like we're closer to it than, than we ever have been. Yes, that clip was from earlier today at that World AI conference. So Elon doubling down on his projections for Tesla solving FSD. Yes, he's been wrong many times in the past, but one of these times he's going to be right. And for what it's worth, at the conference, Elon said Tesla would be happy to license self-driving technology to other car companies. Feels like just a matter of time. Last night, we got a somewhat confusing rumor tweet, so be careful, but the Project Highland production schedule remains unchanged from Shanghai. Last we heard, maybe September in quarter three, but it appears more than 70 current Model 3s with front and rear GigaPress processes have already been delivered to start the capacity ramp early. I say unclear because are we supposed to presume these 70 Model 3s would be classified as Project Highland? We'll find out soon. And in case you missed this picture of of the Project Highland doing some winter testing in New Zealand, just wanted to pass it along. At least from this angle, it definitely looks a little bit longer and more sporty. We got this report from a Chinese source saying the Shanghai factory is starting to lay off employees related to battery assembly. This would be for the first phase of that assembly and more than 50% of the employees will be laid off. A small number of people will be transferred to other jobs and the equipment for that first phase of assembly will be dismantled or transferred. Insiders are saying this could be related to the policy the United States has when it comes to not getting the incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act for batteries coming from China. This could also be related to Tesla using the structural pack if the Model 3 is now using GigaCast for both the front and the rear. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe Tesla's going to use that new Qilin battery from CATL that uses cell to pack, so Tesla needs less cell battery assembly. 
You may have seen this new petition that was handed off to NHTSA basically saying that Teslas do still actually have that sudden unintended acceleration, SUA. But as far as I can tell, the research in this petition that came from one individual, Ronald Belton, auto safety researcher, doesn't actually prove anything. If you wanna dive into this one, I'll have these articles below, but Ronald Belt is arguing that Tesla has a faulty inverter design that's actually leading to this SUA. But replying to that article, Jason Hughes, who for a long time has dove into Tesla's battery technology, actually commented on the situation and the short story. He said, this is complete nonsense, referring to that article, this new petition, based on faulty analysis of the hardware. I won't read it, so pause the screen here if you'd like to check out what he said. So at least for now, there is zero actual proof or evidence from real Teslas that this sudden unintended acceleration is actually happening. Anytime it's actually been explored, the result has been that it was driver error. NHTSA did send a letter to Tesla on July 3rd asking for updated responses and current data. They're looking for answers by July 19th essentially for two things, situations involving emergency vehicles and more information to find out if the drivers are indeed paying attention, looking into Tesla's in-cabin monitoring system. The letter asks for data on the number of vehicles with Tesla Vision and if vehicles have the cabin camera system. NHTSA also wants to know what versions of Tesla's software, hardware, and other components have been installed on each car that was sold from 2014 to 2023 in the United States and the dates when any of these Tesla vehicles were admitted into the FSD program. So for now, I would consider things like this routine. It's just NHTSA doing its job. Tesla is spearheading the way for new technology. NHTSA is going to pay the most attention to Tesla for obvious reasons. And everything we've seen so far proves to us that Tesla has been working well with NHTSA to give them the information they need and work it out as we go. I know a lot of people right now are buying Model Ys wondering if they have hardware for and other than looking at the cameras for the red tint, looking at the forward module to see if it has two or three, there are some other new ways to do so. I'll include this link below along with the Reddit thread explaining how it works. As far as we can tell, it's still only Fremont and Austin that are producing Model Ys with Hardware 4 and it's only some of them. Here are some VIN numbers to check from each of those US factories. No reports of Hardware 4 elsewhere globally in the Model Y. But this tool should be a more reliable way to check for anybody that doesn't know what to look for from a hardware perspective. Tesla changed the free color for the Model Y to Midnight Silver Metallic. Now the Pearl White is $1,000. Here's a good side-by-side -side comparison of the Cybertruck and a Model X. Kentucky is now requiring that EV charging companies include Tesla's NAX plug if they want to get those federal dollars that flow through these state programs. Kentucky's plan went into effect last Friday, making it the first. Texas and Washington have so far just made the announcement. And in Texas, naturally, there is some pushback to this requirement mandating the NAX port. A group of EV charger makers and operators is pushing back against that Texas mandate, saying that it's premature. This group is calling for more time to re-engineer and test Tesla's connectors. They're saying time is needed to properly standardize, test, and certify the safety and interoperability of Tesla connectors across the industry. And the these organizations are planning to reach out to the federal government with the issue soon. The groups involved in this pushback, the Texas Department of Transportation, ChargePoint, ABB, FreeWire, EVBox, and Flow. And their argument, having both standards in the market would raise costs for vendors and customers. Saying, charging companies have to rework several aspects of NAX connectors, including extending the cable length and ensuring adequate temperature ranges, as well as get certifications for specific parts. They also need a strong supply chain of NAX cables and connectors that comply with the requirements. From Tesla Mag, the Model Y was the best-selling car in Norway in Q2, no surprise, but overall data for the first half of this year showed the Model Y was the best-selling vehicle for that period, selling more vehicles than its five closest competitors combined. Through the first half of this year, Tesla has sold 15.4 thousand units of the Model Y, and in Norway right now, 83% of new cars sold are pure electric vehicles. Tesla updated the referral program for the Model S and X, so check your mobile app to see the updates. I just wanted to point out, 
as the buyer, you're still getting three months of full self-driving. However, remember right now on Model S and X vehicles with hardware four, there hasn't yet been a software update to those cars that actually have FSD. Just part of why tracking cars with or without hardware four is important. There have been reports that Tesla is pushing an FSD update to hardware four cars this week, but I haven't confirmed it yet. From the CPCA, Tesla's wholesale number in China, 93,680 for June. Plugging that number in, we should get the actual breakdown between exports and domestic deliveries officially in a few days along with production. This would be the second best monthly wholesale number out of Tesla China, number one still November of 2022 with over 100,000. But this would put quarter two for Tesla China over 247,000, which would be a new record by over over 17,000 vehicles. A new study from the Governor's Highway Safety Association said American drivers killed at least 7,500 pedestrians in 2022, the most of any year since 1981, and that's without data from Oklahoma. Another data point to keep in mind of why we need to push forward with autonomous technology. In June, the Model Y became the second best-selling car of any type in Australia, and pure battery electrics made up 8.8% of new car sales in June, a new record. More importantly, that number is still 7.4% for the first half of this year. When you include plug-in hybrids, that number jumps jumps to 16.6% of overall sales. And here's the top five overall auto sales in Australia for June. And here's the top 10 for pure EVs. Should be noted, Hyundai and BMW are not yet in this list, but the Model Y had more sales than all of the following nine cars combined. There was some reporting that Tesla lowered the prices of the Model 3 and Y in Japan by three to 4%. Just wanted to remind everybody about two months ago, Tesla had raised the prices of these vehicles. From Drive Tesla Canada, for the first half of the year in the UK, full BEVs made up over 16% of new car sales. And for June, the Model Y was the only BEV to make it onto the top 10 list. These are the UK's best sellers for June, but more importantly, if you look at the year to date column, the Model Y is creeping up to that number one spot. Essentially, we have the Chinese government getting 16 automakers in China together to sign an agreement to stop with the price wars and encourage fair competition. The goal is to avoid abnormal pricing, whatever that means, and today, 16 different companies took part in a signing ceremony. Yes, all of the big hitters, BYD, NEO, Xpeng, Geely, and Tesla have signed. It sounds like this is coming from the Ministry of Industry and IT pushing the China Association of Auto Manufacturers to bring these companies together. Here's a look at the average price cut by automaker for the first half of 2023 in the Chinese market. What these companies have agreed to is some form of regulation for marketing activities, not to disrupt fair competition, to not exaggerate or use false publicity to get new customers, to put quality first, and to maintain steady growth. Here's what this feels like. Let's just use some hypothetical numbers and say Tesla in China is making margins of about 15%, while the next best in the industry may be around 5%. So that means Tesla could cut prices another 10%, and still be positive 5% margin, but that would push the rest of the industry to negative 5% margins, which of course would not be great for any of those Chinese brands and it would not be sustainable for the long term. Sadly, we don't really get any detail. Does this mean Tesla can't lower its prices below a certain point? We just don't know. But the good news is it seems like most of these price wars have been subsiding on their own over the past few weeks anyway. But yeah, to me, this really just feels like a way to try to protect some of the Chinese EV makers. Here's your daily dose of comedy. In all seriousness, today VW said it plans to launch autonomous vehicles for ride hailing and goods delivery services in Austin, Texas by 2026. They'll do this by partnering with Mobileye. The plan? To test 10 ID Buzz EVs retrofitted with Mobileye's autonomous driving system with safety drivers on board in limited areas of Austin, including downtown. Back to the Tesla Careers page, they're now hiring for seasonal vehicle operators in different cities across the United States. The ultimate goal? To enhance Tesla's data collection processes. The compensation range between $18 and $48 per hour. In the US for the first half of this year, there were over 557.3 thousand
1,000 EVs sold, meaning yes, we're on track to hit the 1 million mark. But sales of ICE vehicles also grew about 10% in the first half of this year compared to last year. On the EV front, we're up to 7.2% of overall sales, up from 5.4% last year. In case you see the Choice in Automobile Retail Sales Act, it's really just an effort from some Republicans to prevent the EPA's tailpipe emissions proposal that was unveiled earlier this year. The CARS Act would prohibit regulations mandating the use of any specific technology or regulations that limit the availability of new vehicles based on engine type. Previously, Stellantis announced four different platforms for EVs, small, medium, large, and frame. Now we get more information on the medium. The first United States model is supposed to be a Chrysler sometime around 2026, but on this medium frame, two battery sizes, the bigger one 98 kilowatt hours, getting 370 miles of EPA range. The smaller battery pack would be around 264 miles, and this would be on a 400 volt system with the option to upgrade to 800 volts. That being Stellantis' option, not the customer. Today, CATL announced a new electrolyte that would improve charging efficiency for EVs, especially in extreme cold. We don't get any details other than this new electrolyte could deliver 50% increases in efficiency in extreme cold temperatures and 40 3% under normal temps. In a new Peter Rawlinson interview over the weekend, this from Auto Express, he said after the gravity, which is next year, probably the second half of next year, we're going to do Model 3 and Model Y competitors. We think around $50,000, maybe 48K, something like that. Too early to say, but that's the vision. Rivian announced Amazon has now deployed over 5,000 of the EDVs, electric delivery vans. RJ Scringe also said about 20% of the EV maker's production would be for commercial vans this year and that Rivian is ready to take additional buyers for vans beyond Amazon. They're in the final stages of negotiating out of that contract of exclusivity. Rivian also beat Q2 delivery expectations that were 11,000 by delivering 12,640 vehicles in Q2 and producing 13,992. This up from first quarter numbers of 7.9 thousand deliveries and 9.3 thousand produced. And yesterday, Amazon announced that Rivian's EDV vans are actually being rolled out in Germany. Over 300 of Rivian's EDVs will be on the streets in the coming weeks. Unfortunately, it's not all roses for Rivian right now as they're facing a lawsuit claiming they defrauded shareholders around the IPO, saying that they had underpriced their vehicles, but they actually knew they were gonna have to charge tens of thousands of dollars more because they knew what the bill of materials actually was. Basically, shareholders are upset, feeling like they got the bait and switch, expecting the cars to be a certain price, but they actually ended up being about $40,000 more expensive. Holmars tweeted out the news, Nikola grabbed $42 million from California for hydrogen truck stations, and Elon said, California has pushed hydrogen for a long time, makes no sense. In quarter two, GM sold 15,600 electric vehicles, which is about 3% of the EVs Tesla sold in quarter two. This will be the newest vehicle to watch in the Chinese EV market. It's BYD's Denza brand, and this is the N7, priced right at the Tesla Model Y between 40 and 50,000 US dollars. Deliveries of this vehicle are starting in two weeks. In quarter two, the F-150 Lightning sold 4.4 thousand units. Overall, Ford's EV sales in quarter two declined 2.8% to 14.8 thousand vehicles, and EVs represented just 2.8% of Ford's overall sales in Q2. You tell me, years later, who's the EV leader? You can find me on Twitter at DylanLumis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.